Today we're going to talk about how matter can change. We're going to talk about physical changes first. Okay. Matter can undergo two types of changes. You can have a physical change and you can have a chemical change. And first we're going to talk about physical changes. All right, physical changes involve changes to a substance physical properties only. All right, so common physical changes that you may know about are like freezing and melting, like the ice here in my glass, okay? When I freeze water, that's a physical change. When it melts back to liquid water, that's another physical change, okay? Another physical change would be dissolving. Like I could take some salt and I could dissolve it in this glass of water, okay? And as it dissolves, you can't see it in the glass of water anymore when it gets completely dissolved, but you know it's there because you can taste it. And you can, uh, when you taste it, you will definitely taste salt. Okay, see, now it's all clear because it's dissolved. And how do you get it back out? Well, you can evaporate it, and that's another physical change. And that's what I did in this glass right here. I, I had dissolved salt just like in this one. But I let it, uh, actually heated it up in a microwave until the water all boiled away, and now the salt is back again. Okay, so that's another physical change. Making a paper airplane by folding the paper is a physical change, right? Alright, so I can take this piece of notebook paper, and I can make a paper airplane out of it. All I'm doing is folding the paper. I'm changing the way it looks by folding it, but it's still a piece of paper. All right, so I can keep folding it and folding it until I have the paper airplane the way I want it. But again, it's still a piece of paper. I didn't change it from a piece of paper into another substance, okay? And if I want to get it back, all I have to do is unfold it and I still have my piece of paper, okay? If I want to turn my ice cube back into water, all I have to do is sit it out here for a little bit and let it melt, okay? The substance just stays the same. This paper airplane is still a piece of paper. I unfolded it. It's a piece of paper. The ice, once it's frozen, is still water. All I have to do to get it back is let it melt, okay? When I dissolve the salt in the water, it's still salt. All I have to do is evaporate the water and I have salt again. All right, now we're going to talk about chemical changes. All right, chemical changes involve changes in physical and chemical properties of a substance. During a chemical change, a new substance forms. All right, so Earlier, we made a paper airplane out of a piece of paper, and all we did was fold it, okay? We can unfold it, and it's still a piece of paper, all right? I can take another piece of notebook paper, and I can crumple it, but that's just a physical change because I can uncrumple it, and even if I crumple it, it's still paper. I can even rip it, okay? I may not be able to exactly stick it back together, but it's still paper when I rip it, okay? Those are all physical changes. However, if I burn it, okay, once it burns, is it going to still be a piece of paper? All right. When you're burning it, all right, um, burning a piece of notebook paper changes the paper's physical and chemical properties. All right. Initially, it's white, and you can crumple it and rip it. But when it burns, it changes to black, flaky ashes. All right? It's a new type of substance. It does not resemble the notebook paper. Okay? It's black. It's flaky. It's totally different properties than the original notebook paper. It's a little grayish. Okay? We changed it completely. And the biggest indicator that this underwent a chemical change, I can't unburn it. I cannot change this new substance back into notebook paper, All right? So burning is an example of a chemical change.
All right, another example of a chemical change that you may have seen is uh, rusting. All right, here's a steel pan like you cook stuff in. And here's an example of a similar steel pan, except this one's been left outside and it has rusted. Okay? Rusting occurs when some uh, metal that contains iron or steel uh, is left outside and, and, and is exposed to uh, water and oxygen over a long time. Okay? Um, this pan kind of has a metallic luster, it's very solid can't really I mean you could bend it if you if you twisted it really hard you could bend it um, however when it rusts it's chemical change and check it out you can't bend this anymore now it's brittle it breaks easily okay so this uh, iron in this old pan has undergone a chemical change called rusting and uh, it's when the iron in the pan combines with oxygen in the air it forms a substance called iron oxide so it's a totally new substance now the old pan you know it's malleable it's uh, got metallic luster if I used a, a circuit I would see that it's a conductor of electricity this old pan that has rusted it's brittle doesn't have a metallic luster anymore and uh, it may, may or may not still conduct electricity, so its properties have completely changed from when it was um, original iron. Okay, so this is an example of a chemical change. Okay, so right now we need to talk about what, are some, what is some evidence that a chemical change has taken place. Okay, how do you know when you have a chemical change? All right. Um, one of the the first things that we look at um, when we when we look at a chemi chemical change is a production of a gas and when you combine two substances and a gas is formed that is a great indicator that you've had a chemical change and um, if the chemicals that you combine are liquid you would see the gas in form of bubbles okay so here's an example of that I can combine these two liquids and as soon as I do, it bubbles and foams. Perfect example of a gas forming. All right. A second example is a temperature change. Okay. When I uh, first started these, uh, the temperature of these substances was about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And now the temperature is closer to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So the temperature has lowered. That is an example of a chemical change. Uh, the temperature doesn't necessarily have to lower. Sometimes the temperature could increase. I mean, when we burned the paper earlier, the temperature of that paper went from, you know, about 70 degrees Fahrenheit to way hotter than that because it was on fire. So um, temperature change is another great example of a chemical change. All right. Uh, the formation of a precipitate is uh, another example. Precipitate. All right. A precipitate is a substance that forms and separates from a solution. All right, so right here, it, it would be a solid. Right here, I have liquid milk, all right? There's no solid in that. It's, it's just all liquid, all right? But if I take, uh, let's say, some lemon, and I squeeze some lemon juice into this milk right here, all right? As soon as I do that, I notice a change, all right? The, the milk be begins to curdle. It looks a little nasty compared to the way it was. All right, so a chemical change has happened because now I see there is a solid in there. It's kind of chunky. It uh, sticks to the side of the glass when before it didn't. Okay, so when I combined the lemon juice and the milk, I formed a precipitate. It is a solid, whereas before I had two liquids. Okay, formation of a precipitate is definite evidence of a chemical change. All right, and the last one, I don't really have a good example of right here would be a change in color. If um, you combine two substances and the color of those substances changes, that is a great indicator that you have had a chemical change, color change. So we're looking at uh, evidence of a chemical change would be production of a gas like bubbles, all right? A change in temperature like we had here, 
would also be an example of a chemical change. Formation of a precipitate like we did when we uh, combined our uh, lemon juice and milk right here. We made this solid substance and then um, a change in color.